Um, Your Ladyship, the Chief Justice, Deputy Chief Justice, Justices of the Supreme Court, my name is Kiyoko Kilukumi, and I appear for the first respondent. Our team leader has asked me to deal with the issue raised by Mr. George Oraro, Senior Counsel, in regard to the affidavits filed by Joseph Kinyua and Kennedy Keara. This court did direct that the, 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 the first respondent is at liberty to come and place the facts he has before this court, not through affidavits, but we've been given the permission to place the facts because time was running and the court directed we have that time. The first respondent wishes to place it on record that under Article 240 of the Kenya Constitution, there is established a National Security Council. And he is, by vacuum of being the substantive deputy president, he is entitled to sit in that council. He says, in the last five years, the council has not sat and discussed anything to do with elections. He further says that matters of election are vested in an independent body, and that independent body is the IEBC. That is the body that has the constitutional mandate to deal with elections. He further says, during that period of five years, the council has not asked the National Security Advisory Committee to deal with IEBC on any matter relating to elections. And he takes the position that the visit by members of the National Security Advisory Committee to IEBC at the Tulling Center was an interference with the functions of IEBC. And it was calculated, given the membership who was sent there, it was designed and calculated to intimidate the chair of the IEBC and to seek to influence the outcome of the election. We ask the court to note but the, these affidavits were provoked by what Mr. Chebukati said in his affidavit sworn on the 26th of August, 2022. From paragraphs 55 to paragraph 75, he has given a subheading and he calls it an attempt to subvert the will of the people. And we invite the court to Consider those paragraphs and to see which party is telling you the truth. We wish to refer you specifically to paragraph 66 in that affidavit. And it is an important environment, an important deposition in that affidavit. He says, Mr. Chebukati, when he was at the National Tallying Center, members of the National advisory, uh, sorry, National Security Advisory Committee visited him and he sat with them after 2 p.m. It is important to contextualize the time. We are talking of the 15th of August, Bomas of Kenya, there is a meeting and this meeting is attended by all the commissioners, all the seven commissioners are there. The fact of that meeting is not disputed. Or the affidavits filed regarding that matter make critical admissions. The first admission is that indeed Joseph Kinyua telephoned Chebukati and told him, I'm sending my members to you. That's an admission. The second admission is that 
all the commissioners, and these are the affidavits from Mr. Joseph Kinywa and Mr. Kenneth Kiara, all the commissioners were present. It is past 2 p.m. It doesn't say how long this meeting took. The country had been put on notice. Elections, results will be declared at 3 p.m. And once you look at the paragraph I preferred the court to, Mr. Chabukati says, the message from this powerful committee was simple. Declare these elections in favor of the petitioner, the first petitioner in petition number five. If you are not able to do so, please massage the electoral data and force a runoff. And now that issue was discussed openly by the members of this powerful committee and all the commissioners in IEBC. The four commissioners made it very clear the suggestion from the security committee is reasonable and we should actually accommodate it. We should think of doing it. The three commissioners, and all of them have sworn affidavit attesting to that. The three commissioners said, nothing doing. We will declare these elections in accordance with the Constitution of Kenya, and we will declare the legitimate results. And so we ask the court, you do not have the advantage of witnesses being cross-examined but you have the ability to look at all the accounts and see which account is more probable. The meeting starts past two. Elections were to be declared at three. At 4 p.m., the four commissioners are in the Serena Hotel. Our TV screens has been split one side says four commissioners are disowning the results. The other screen is showing us chaos in bombers, attack on the chair of IABC, attack on the two other commissioners. Do you believe, will this court believe that members of the National Security Advisory Committee was going to discuss matters of security when in less than one hour, two hours, the electoral commissioners are being assorted, and this is being broadcast live, assorted, a cognizable offense. Police are in bombers of Kenya. Nobody's arrested. And the people who are doing these attacks are well known. So we ask you to consider that fact in trying to see which account is likely to be true. The commissioners at Serena Hotel opened by saying, we've conducted a very good election. It's only gone bad towards the end. You will ask yourselves, does somebody disown results which he doesn't know. Do you believe these commissioners did not know what the outcome has been? We submit they knew the result, and that is why they were disowning it. We also ask the court to consider these four commissioners, apart from the press they did on 15th of September, they again did it on 16th the following day, 16th of August. Was it a coincidence that again our TV screens were split into two? You see the four commissioners and you see the first petitioner and they are speaking, the language they are talking, the words they are using are strikingly similar. Is it a coincidence? These are matters we invite the court to consider in trying to ask itself which account do we believe? I urge this court to believe the account 
given by the three commissioners. The will of the people was just about to be subverted. And it was, the attempt was unsuccessful because the three commissioners stood by their oath of office and faithfully executed what was expected of them by the Constitution of Kenya. The, this split between the Commission, the court has asked question, post questions, when did it happen? Once you look at the affidavit of Chebukati and the timing at past two, they are in a meeting, and by four, they are in Serena Hotel, you will come to the inescapable conclusion that the division in IEBC was caused by the National Security and Advisory Committee. And indeed, they hijacked the four. That is why the four would approach this court for the very first time in the history of this country, approach the court to seek nullification of an election that they superintended and that they said they conducted a very good election. We ask the court to take into account that there appears to have been a mistaken impression that presidential elections are determined by commissioners. Anybody who wants to become the president of Kenya must have in his corner the Kenyan electorate. And that voter who turns up in the polling station, not the one who stays away. And if you convince that voter who turns out and you get the majority votes, you become the president. Seven commissioners cannot make you the president. Four commissioners cannot make you the president. Who makes the decision as to who becomes the president of the Republic of Kenya? It is our humble submission. It is not the commission. It is not any of the commissioners. It is the electorate. It is the people of Kenya. And therefore, this narrative that we are the majority we needed to sit down and make a decision. That decision as to who becomes the president of Kenya does not lie with the commission. Theirs is to midwife the process, and that is all they can do. We wish to submit that the first respondent won these elections fair and square. You've had the submissions and the evidence that has been presented by the midwife, IEBC. And they have made it absolutely clear that this election was conducted in accordance with the Constitution. It was computed in accordance with the Constitution. And they have a very clear winner as to who obtained the highest number of votes and made the other requirements required by Article 138 for. For that reason, we ask this court to consider